Gashi. What up, what up, man? So, Thomas, thank you for taking the time. I know you've got a lot you're working on right now. Man. And it's a pleasure, first of all, to no, thank you for get this moment. Me, man. I think what you're doing is amazing. Firstly. Thank you so much. Um, it's different. Thank but you. But I think more importantly, <clears throat> the come up is what I'm more focusing on understanding because I feel like that's what makes it even more different. Yeah. So I understand you grew up in Libya. Yeah, right? I was born in Libya, yeah. yeah. How did Libya mold and shape Larry? Um, you know, me, I feel like every artist you meet is a product of their environment. You understand? Like everyone you meet uh, is, is the way they are because of where they were born and raised. You know, everyone. I feel like as human beings, like we are, we live, we, where when we come, when we come on earth, we basically, we come through our mother. But once we leave our mother, we part of, we, we're part of our energy the first energy we touch is the, where we were born. So that energy kind of, we shared that energy with, with the soil on where we're born. I feel like me being born there kind of like somehow, some way has shaped and formed me in a way where I've, I've, I'm like a gladiator. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm a soldier. Like I'm, I will not let no one tell me no because I, I was born there and I've, I've lived in such hard times there that everything else seems like I'm walking apart. You came over to America. Yeah, from Germany. From Germany. <laughs> yeah. No English. No English at all. I spoke five languages. Tell before. me a bit about that. How was that? You know. So I was born in Africa, Libya. Mm -hmm. I traveled there. I traveled all around there. My my parents were refugees from Kosovo, so um, them being from Kosovo, like they were forced to move, and when they went there for better life, the whole the whole plan was to come to America. You know, freedom, land of the free, more opportunity, like everybody else. I mean. America's built off of immigrants, you know, people forget that, you know, like, like, you know, when people say, oh, we don't want immigrants coming in here, like, you're crazy, like, this place was built off of immigrants, you know what I'm saying? So, um, um, my parents decided America was the goal, and they traveled over 24 countries, this is a long story short, they traveled over 24 countries for us to get here, and then when they finally got, got here, we lived in a shelter. So majority of my life, I was homeless. No place, no, wow. no place to call home. No place to sleep, and no school. No, no nothing. You know, I was always moving. And then when we came here, we lived in a shelter for like a few years. And then we lived in my uncle's basement for another few years. And then we, we was, my father somehow, some way, got connected with someone who said, "Hey, we have an apartment for you." as long as you're able to maintenance and clean the building and do the garbage and everything, I'll give you a one bedroom. And then five of us slept in a one bedroom apartment, which was apartment 23, the first, I got a tattered on me. That's the first place I called home, <clears throat> which was apartment 23 in Brooklyn. That was the first time I've ever had a place that was not a refugee camp, was not any weird shit. It was actually my home, my apartment. Yeah. And it was all five of us in the one bedroom. We would use sheets to split the rooms so my sister could sleep in that room and change. And we would do that. So we lived a harsh life for such a major long time. You know what I mean? And then going to school, I went to school for the like first time really going to school and learning. And it was when I first when I first came to America, my first language was Arabic because I was born in Libya. Then I spoke Albanian wow. with my parents. I spoke German, I spoke a little bit of Yugoslavian, but every country that I went to, somehow, some way as a kid, it seems like children pick up languages faster than adults. Yeah. So I was picking up languages so quickly. You know, I lived in Switzerland, I lived in Italy, you know what I'm saying? So I would pick I would pick languages quicker than my parents and I would learn them. So who knows? I probably was speaking like nine when I first got here, you know what I mean? And then you slowly hear people say, oh, you speak with an accent. You speak with an accent. I'm sure you're from London. You hear it all the time. And when when you speak with an accent, it's very difficult to, sometimes it's not a compliment. You know what I'm saying? Especially me, like my favorite rapper is never rapped with an accent. So my goal was to make sure that I forgot that accent. Like I wanted to completely forget it and learn English well. And and. The first thing as a child is you watch TV, American TV, over and over again, and you begin to learn the language and forget the accent. So that was my goal. First things first, I was going to watch <clears throat> MTV, watch Michael Jackson all day, every day, because I fell in love with Michael. That's my first inspiration. And 
I said, I'm going to learn English to the point where people think I'm from here. Oh. And that was the goal first. Then I went to school and I would go to this deli where we would smoke weed and play on the arcades. And there's this kid named Melvin who rapped at me and everyone laughed. And I looked around, I saw everyone laugh at me. And I was like, what was he saying that made everyone laugh? And how was he saying it? He was rhyming. So I said, I said, next time he does this shit again, I'm going to come back at him with a rhyme. So I went home and I wrote my first rhyme. And that's how I began rapping. Wow. Yeah. And then from there, I went to junior high school, played basketball. No one knew how to say my first name because my first name is Debbie Nutt. And nobody knows how to say it. So they called me Larry Bird because that was the only white player that was popular that everybody knew. And I was the only white kid on the basketball team. So they called me Larry. That's how I, I got Larry. So when I became an Amer American citizen, I added Larry as my middle name. So um, from there, I went to high school and I started rapping more and I fell in love with the people going, oh, ooh, like that whole chanting. I fell in love with that and I would rap. And, and, and I was always doing entertainment anyway, because even when I, when, when I was getting sick of the refugee camp, uh, canned foods, me and my brother would dance to Michael Jackson on the street or go to, or go to my friends, uh, rich friends' parties who, like, we met, like, rich kids that we knew from, like, down the street with the big houses. Their parents would throw parties, and me and my brother would dance to Michael Jackson, and they'd throw money in the hat. So we'd eat like that. So I was always entertaining. I was always doing entertainment. There's nothing new. Um, when I came here... I would uh, I would rap at high school. When I went to high school, I would rap at people in the lunchrooms. And I realized that I really loved writing rhymes and like doing the whole music thing. But I would have never thought that I was going to really take it to here. Like, you know what I'm saying? So long story short, I played football, got a full scholarship in Massachusetts. I, I went there for two years. And then I realized that I really loved music. I would cut football practice to go and record songs. Mm -hmm. So I left a full scholarship. Wow. I left a full scholarship to do music. There was one summer I met French Montana and mm -hmm. I was like working around him. I fell in love with with uh with how like he would like record like and do songs with some of my favorite rappers at the time and he was coming up so I was like, "Yo, this is dope." Like watching his come up was like I could do it too cuz we have a similar story. Mm -hmm. And um I dropped out. And then when I dropped out, my parents being strict like people from Albania, strict parents and like believing in diploma, like that's mm. all they want yeah. is a diploma. They don't believe yeah. in anything else. It broke their heart. You know what I'm saying? I watched my parents kind of cry and get upset and then kick me out the house. They were like, it's either you get a job and help us pay the rent or you go back to school. You got to choose because this music shit is not an option. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm out. So I'd be in Soho streets, and you know, Kino brought us to, uh, he brought us together, but you could tell you himself, like, he'd see me in the streets with my book bag, my jacket on, selling my mixtapes all the time and like pushing my music. And the thing was, I was always, I was homeless for about two years until I met a girlfriend, stayed with her for a little bit. And then, uh, then I also met this kid named Scott Andrews. So I was homeless. When I dropped out, I made a CD that I thought was going to make me pop off, and it never popped off. So for like two years, I basically was pushing the CD, thinking it's going to get me hot, but it wouldn't. I'd be sleeping at Wendy's, you know what I'm saying, sleeping on the train, sleeping at my friend Scott Andrews' crib, like trying to figure it out. And then I had to get a job because the shit wasn't working. I was running into artists, and I would give them my CD. Nobody would call me, and everybody played me. And... There's even one time that I always tell the story of interview I do. Like there's one time that that I gave Jay Z. I went Jay Z dropped his book. I jumped online to go buy his book. I bought the book and then I slipped my mixtape in the book. So when he signs it, he gets my mixtape. He opened it up and like, what's your name? Grabbed the CD, threw it in the garbage, wrote my name on the book and gave it back. And then eight years later, I ended up signing with Jay Z. So it's moments like that that like always happen like everyone I meet now I tell them I gave you my CD and they always ask me the same question like hey would you want to play me that CD right now and I would say no so that's why you got to thank God that it never worked out mm -hmm. because I wasn't good I wasn't as good as I am today and I'm only going to progress and get better because I really love what I do you know so long story short uh, I was homeless for a while and then my mom told me she was like yo 
what are you going to do? You need to go back to school or you need to get a job. Because I was like, you know what? You're great, mom. I fucked up. Rapping is not for me. Music is not for me. It's not working out. It's been years. And then this one night, I'm driving my mother. She had a late night shift, whatever. I'm driving. And while driving, Monday, I was supposed to go back to school and register. I'm driving my mom. It's like 12 o'clock at night. I'm driving her to work. And my song came on on the radio on Hot 97. And I, wow. sat, and I pulled over. I pulled over to the side. And I cried. And she cried. And I was like, looking up, like I felt like that was a sign for me to not quit and go back to school the next day because I was making a mistake. And I didn't go back to school Monday. I was like, nah, I woke up. She was like, what do you mean? I said, nah, I'm not going back to school. I said, I'm not doing it. She was like, what do you mean? You have to go back? I said, nah, I'm good. Like you have no idea like what it's like to wake up every single day and not even know if you're going to be alive because you know going to another country and you're getting locked up, they're going to separate you and your family. You might even get murdered. 